Shalom Aleikum. Welcome. So I'm not really sure which Siddur you're using, but I'm going to be using my um, Chabad Siddur. I know some people have, some of the ladies have this one. It's an art scroll one, but it's still Sephard. And then there's also the um, another um, art scroll that is the, um, the regular Ashkenaz uh, Rabbinical Council of America Siddur. But whichever one that you're going to be looking into, we're going to go ahead and start discussing the attributes of the Midah. So we're going to look at day one. Hayom Yom Echad Laomer. And this is Chesed Sheve Chesed. We're going to talk about the attribute of love and what love is. Now, it is a verb. And obviously, we know that it's very important. And, and depending on what culture you're from and what type of manners and behaviors you um, are around in your learning environment, it's going to shape the perception and how you perceive what love is. And to know in individuals, your friends, your family, your loved ones, your spouses, we might interpret love in different ways because we had different upbringings and were exposed to different forms of the molding processes of our character. We were exposed and molded differently, should we put that. So maybe someone might feel loved and express love by giving somebody food. Maybe somebody might feel love and express love by listening to what they have to say by showing that they're actively listening, that they're actually saying, so is there anything else you would like to tell me? Wow, that was very nice. I would love to sit and listen to you. Some people feel loved if some people ask them to go out with them for a coffee or to go out with them for a walk. Some people feel loved if you give them gifts, if you give them flowers, if you, I mean, there's different types of gifts you can give people. Some people feel loved if you give them food. They feel more loved if you give them clothes. It just depends on what the perception of that person has developed of what love means. So we know that love is powerful. Well, I like to think of and to teach my students and to learn as well from others in all humility as we all don't know everything so what I like to learn and what I like to um, re re repeat by example is that love is like nature and so if we look in nature we see that there are a whole bunch of living organisms we see trees it's there and when a bum or <laughs> a homeless person walks by that tree the tree is there it's still giving that individual oxygen it's still providing it with the sustenance that that individual needs to sustain their lives it's providing it with that oxygen that Hashem created it to provide that person walking by it and or all the other things around it um, it's giving them love because that's what we need to survive. We don't obviously meditate and think on how important it is for us to, to, to have, to possess the ability to inhale and exhale. Inhale the oxygen and exhale, giving back reciprocity, the carbon dioxide back to the trees because they need to inhale that in order to continue this cycle, the cleansing process. So if we think about that, the, 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 the poor person, the rich person, walking by these, walking amongst and walking in the environment of the trees, they're both getting that love. So there are politics, which we don't like. There are going to be some individuals that are on a lower level that have to favor. Maybe they'll have favorites and maybe some people won't be their favorites. But this is the time to show and to test your capabilities or to test your ability, not to test, but to practice your ability to show love. Okay, maybe you don't like somebody. Maybe you don't like the way somebody, their attitude is. Maybe that can help you look into yourself and see, hmm, am I a good listener? 
Do I always listen? Or do I just run my mouth and talk because I know that I have been here the longest? I mean, we all have an ego here, right? Or can we look at it and say, you know, that person is different for me from a different culture. And they're even, maybe they're from a culture that's mentioned all the way back in the Torah. Maybe they're from Ethiopia, you never know, or Kush. Or, you know, China, we don't know. I'm just saying, the, the ability to look beyond the beyond, looking past materialism. And yes, oxygen can be captured as something material, but it's something that we have abundance of. And so far, we don't have to pay for oxygen yet. We do, however, have to pay for water, H2O, and hopefully in the future, we won't have to pay for oxygen. But we, we have to be willing to accept others. And that's another form of love. Would you rather be accepted or would you rather be tolerated? Because when, you, when, some, when we engage in acceptance, we engage in true, in true love, in true ahava. We engage in that. Why? Because we've accepted that individual for who they are. We might not like their actions, but we can still accept them. We've learned how to tolerate their actions, but we can still accept them. Okay, maybe we can't accept their actions, but we can accept that individual and figure out a way that we can accept them. Um, there are so many ways we can expand on it. So we have to think that it is a verb. So we know that it's doing. We know that we love Hashem because we take care of our shuls. We know we love Hashem because we take care of our sephorim. Okay, we don't want to put it upside down. We always want to turn it right side up. But why? That's, show, that's a sign of honor. It might seem frivolous. It might seem that it's a little tiny thing to pick at. But it is actually showing uh, baby steps towards uh, that little teshuva. And those little tiny baby steps, even if it's reading a couple of words, a sentence, a paragraph, we're showing, we're getting that little um, ignition. We're getting that little tiny baby steps to get us motivated to do more. And so that's another way we can look at love. Maybe we don't like something. We don't like animals. Okay, God forbid, I was them that we don't like animals. The behema, whoa, they're scary. Okay, well, Hashem created the animals. You don't like flies? Well, they serve a purpose too. Okay. When the plagues came down, Hashem loved all of those uh, locusts that he sent. He created them. But they could be a nuisance if they get out of hand. But we have to understand that if we think about things that we don't like and think about how we can look at those things and appreciate why Hashem has created them, then we can open ourselves up to more acceptance and more love. We for sure.